Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media. Um, and I've come out to just share some, summarise uh, some uh, thoughts and ideas uh, for this week's community media discussion, uh, which takes place on Thursdays from 6pm. And you can sign up to take part in our discussion. We have it on a weekly basis uh, by going to patreon.com slash decenteredmedia. And you can find more details on the website, decentered.co.uk. <coughs> so this week I want to be talking about what John Vivekey calls wisdom institutions. I was listening to his lectures uh, earlier in the year about the metamodern crisis, the meaning crisis. And one of the things that he kind of think put quite eloquently was the idea that we don't really have um, a strong sense of uh, institutions that provide social and cultural uh, wisdom. Um, you know, how, how are we is initiated into our culture? How is it that we are uh, become part of a uh, society and a culture? And in the past, we've relied heavily on traditional uh, modes of that through, through religion, schooling, uh, social institutions like working men's clubs, trade unions. But there's a lot, you know, the, there's a lot less emphasis on those things now and that they are much more about individual um, we're, we're kind of in a way left to fend for ourselves. I've written a blog with some thoughts on the website decenter.co.uk, uh, and it, you know at the moment um, it's very interesting here in the UK because we are uh, going through a period of transition from Queen Elizabeth, who died last week, to King Charles III, uh, who is is taking the throne and what's at play is a lot of um, cultural, uh, social, institutionalised forms of um, demonstrations of purpose, let's uh, kind of as broad as that, which, um, you know, Parliament, the church, uh, the armed forces, those kind of bastions of a uh, of a, a, a modern society um, and they're still incredibly important and the, the role that our media plays in that in things like BBC being you know a, a national broadcaster at a time of uh, social concern and a lot of people are you know kind of uh, upset uh, the passing of an era uh, some of the you know kind of ways that people have expressed these ideas of what they're feeling and it's kind of yes okay on occasions like this we maybe rely on sport and uh, maybe rely on you know cultural expectations of i mean you know i think boris johnson kind of you know during the pandemic wanted to make it clear that he wasn't going to do anything that would interfere with the the right of the british person to go to the pub uh, i'm i'm not quite sure that that is a uh, a sustainable cultural uh, position to take for the future, uh, but it was one that he he kind of used as a yardstick to measure his appreciation and understanding of the folk of these isles, if you want to put it like that. And so, you know, increasingly though, we are living in a world which is fragmented, which is globalised, where there is a um, a diversity of cultural experience and in a place like here like Leicester uh, you can't describe it as a monoculture monoculture it is very much multicultural multi-ethnic multi-faith and m lots of exper different experiences that people have from all around the world and different cultural backgrounds and but, you know, do we have unifying institutions that we are able to uh, call upon and um, trust and be part of when you know moments uh, as is happening at the moment of great change uh, uh, kind of uh, are, are, are you know kind of challenges and so it got me thinking about the idea of what the one of the roles and the purposes of community media might be which is to in, in the way that community media is decentralized it's a, a patchwork and a network uh, it isn't a centralised institution, it's a decentralised set of 
uh, you know, kind of groups and affiliations, and it's got that social economy, mutuality uh, element to it, which is about small groups of people doing things from the grassroots upwards. You know, the uh, the the um, the, the uh, disorganisation, if you like, it isn't something which is centrally planned or managed, and it's very difficult to identify a unified sense of purpose or a unified sense of aims and ideals and concepts which drive community media. There are a number of ways of approaching it other than it's a process by which people can articulate their concerns, uh, they can discuss things, they can uh, uh, raise their voices uh, and for particularly for people who are not included or who are, who are marginalized by mainstream media and who are not and would not wish to see themselves and uh, in in the you know kind of participating in the institutions of mainstream media because they don't fit the kind of model that these, inst these, these commercial or public service institutions uh, typify, but they want to do something for themselves and they're locally grounded in the needs of their shared experience of place, uh, of community and of purpose, which, you know, and th th there's an issue in the UK because I think a lot of traditionally thinking in the UK from the government is that if it isn't national then it must be local and it's quite meaningless in that sense. So our local institutions, our local wisdom institutions uh, are you know approximations of our national institutions um, and so can we reconfigure this? Can we think about it in a different way? Can we look at what we do with our media and our community media, which isn't part of an organised network, but is lots of people acting independently and separately from one another, to say, well, there's a set of common values there. And part of those values are to... What do we pass on to future generations? What do we... Um, how can we help people who are new arrivals to our communities? What are the things that we value within our culture and the things that we are maybe more uh, critical of? And I think it's an open process. It should be both a process of uh, appraisal, you know, it should be a process of appraisal that values and critiques what we have and where we and how we've got that and that there are many different forms of social engagement and there are many different people who need to be brought into the conversations about what we regard as being socially valuable and culturally valuable who are not being brought into those conversations or they, if they are it's quite tokenistic ways that they're brought into those conversations so wisdom institutions it's about you know what have, what have we learned what are we learning and what are we passing on and what will our future generations pass on that they value now i don't think that we should wait for large-scale national you know, London-based, that's typically how it's thought, uh, institutions, by that I mean the, the kind of mainstream, uh, not, you know, kind of official state-based institutions. Um, I don't think we should wait for that th those organisations to change. I think we can be building our own wisdom institutions, and we do that by opening platforms to contributions from different people, creative practices from different people, to discussions and dialogue among different people at a local level. So we look for the local expertise and we can do that if we uh, um, use things like asset-based community development processes where we look at what the resources are that are available. And there's a lot of wisdom in our local institutions and we have, you know, when, when times are difficult, we call on our local institutions and in Leicester there are temples and mosques and churches which are bastions but if you're you know outside of that uh, what what is there that you would regard as a, a viable space and place where you can find cultural um, cultural renewal 
um, it, they're quite few and far between because things are left to the market. So, you know, kind of shopping and consumerism and football and cars are the mainstay of a cultural life uh, in it, perhaps, and maybe I'm being overtly critical, but I don't share uh, the, the kind of fascination with these things, although you get drawn into it. Um, I would like to have opportunities outside of those kind of um, market-driven, kind of um, you know, entertainment-driven uh, institute or you know, organisations. And I think there's this space out there for other forms of exchange. Our universities, our schools, our colleges are businesses you know to what extent and how do they uh, support a renewal of our culture for the future and not just reduce everything down to uh, an expedient kind of experience which can be monetized as the phrase goes so even our own you know the cultural production that we share is you know the th- the media that we make and share uh, you know, the expectation is that somehow everybody wants to be an influencer who monetizes their content. Well, that's not the case. There are other reasons for creating content, and that might be to serve and sh- uh, a sense of purpose. So what is that sense of purpose, and how can that lead to the strengthening of our shared common culture, uh, especially at a time of things like climate crisis and growing inequality and, you know, the the advances of technology, which are are pretty overwhelming for most people to anticipate. So there's a lot that we can talk about with this and what would a community media group and project, I'm open to different ideas from different types of uh, um, settings for uh, commu- as community media makers, what are the values that we think we would like to see people uh, initiated into and upholding for the future? Would to what makes them sustainable? I'm not saying that they should be timeless and endless, but they need to be adapted. Uh, but what will get people through the next couple of generations in terms of that? Um, self-determination and that self-representation and the democratic, the socially democratic aspect of a culture which is inclusive and deals with conflict in a way which can be resolved through uh, deliberation and discussion rather than antagonism which a lot of our mainstream media kind of resort to because that's how they know how to get attention in the attention economy or for individuals to uh, you know to, to act as in the kind of me uh, economy where you're promoting yourself the best version of yourself in that dreadful phrase um, you know so you know either we're left to fend for ourselves and figure out how to do things as individuals or we can somehow come together collectively to anticipate what might be a more purposeful way based on our places, based on the people that we share our places with and based on the needs of the planet more generally in a way which is participative and pragmatic and purposeful and practical. Um, So, okay, we're going to talk about this on Thursday. Um, if you've got any comments and you want to share any ideas, uh, follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media. As I say, the website, and there's a blog for this week's uh, discussion on the website at decentered.co.uk. And if you want to sign up, go to patreon.com slash Decentered Media. But hopefully see you soon. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media.